Guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Why I Talk About Feminism on First Dates. And guys, this article is written by a woman who's obviously a feminist. She's young. And that's the last time I'm going to use that word. Otherwise, they're going to cause me some problems with YouTube. I'll speak in code from this point. And guys, this, this whole thing is about this young girl, this feminist. She just can't seem to figure out why she can't meet anybody. Even though she has to always constantly babble on about that subject and things like that and feels entitled to be able to do that, okay? She just can't, she can't figure out why, okay? And I'm doing this article because for a couple reasons, guys. The first reason is just to show you how delusional some people can be, some women, with regards to something like this. Again, I mean, she can't seem to figure out why she can't meet someone and yet she's always rambling on and babbling on about uh, effinism to anybody that will listen to her or that is stuck listening to her, okay? She can't understand why, you know? Another reason I'm doing it, guys, is that for many of you guys that do dating and relationships, there are going to be times when you encounter women like this. Even if your screening process is really good before the first date, Eventually, you're going to end up on a date with someone like this, whether you want to or not, okay? And I'm letting you know, just to show you, this is out there, guys. It's unfortunate, but this is out there, okay? And unfortunately, this isn't going to end anytime soon. This is going to become, this is going to be more and more of this as time goes on. It's going to get worse, okay? You're going to have more and more women like this in varying degrees, okay? And while on the one hand, things are improving in the sense that more guys are are truly waking up and paying attention to what is going on, the damaging, all the damaging effects of ethanism and the impact it's had on our society and things like that. Still, the women are are going to continue on like this on this path for quite some time. Okay, now a lot of you guys say, say "Hey, so what? I don't deal with them." Well, it's going to have an impact one way. Or the, the, there'll be a ripple effect on you. So it's unfortunate it's that way, but that's how it is. <clears throat> I want to help you guys be able to. See that it's out there. Be aware of this and be able to pinpoint it and get away from it as quickly as possible because you don't want to have to deal with women like this. You sure, sure as hell don't want to date or be in a relationship with them like this. I've known guys that have made that mistake, think that realizing what they're getting into, and it was a nightmare, okay? And this is why I always tell you guys, if you guys do dates, one drink. You meet her for one drink because if you out on a date with her and you actually go there hungry expecting to have a meal and she sits down and starts talking about all this crap which you're going to hear about momentarily, that's going to be the longest 45 minutes of your life. You're going to want to puncture your eardrums with your butter knife, okay? So one drink and she starts rambling on about these things, you can chug your beer and say, hey, have a nice night and you're out of there. And if she asks you why you're leaving, you say, hey, I came out to have fun. I didn't come out for a lecture. So I'm going to get into this, guys. You're going to see what I'm talking about here. Starts off saying, I don't know why it's so hard for me to meet someone. Right there. I said to my friends one day. But one of my friends quickly told me exactly why. It was because I expected too much from men. I even expected them to be effinists. I was immediately disheartened when I heard that she thought that was a lot to ask. Delusional. I don't expect the men I date to wear women's rights or human rights t-shirts or have a PhD in gender studies. Yeah, bullshit. I don't even expect them to identify as effinists because it's just a label and doesn't carry much weight. I've met sexist men who call themselves effinists, but I do expect them to believe in gender equality and I don't think that's too much to ask. Still, her comment got to me. And for a period of time, I was less outspoken about my beliefs, at least on first dates. It didn't take me long to realize that holding these views back didn't make dating any easier for me. In fact, it made it even more difficult. There are several reasons why I continue to talk about effinism on first dates. Guys, if you're going to date, it's supposed to be something that's supposed to be, you know, enjoyable and fun and all that. Ideally, okay, that's how it used to be, okay? Not to go there and have somebody lecture you like you're in college or high school about various subjects, particularly intense subjects like politics, religion, and things like that, or these type of things. Who the hell wants to hear about that crap, okay? And she can't figure out why no 
guy wants to be around her while she can't find somebody, okay? That's not enjoyable. That's not pleasant. And the only guys that are going to actually like that are the guys that are so feminized that it, for her, it's going to be like being out with another woman, okay? I know guys like this. They're, they're weak little bitches. I mean, they may be good guys, but they're, they are worn down, brainwashed, weak little bitches, okay? But some women like this, they want a guy like that because it's not about equality anymore. It's about purely emasculation and dominating guys, okay? So she's going to go into her reasons here. And the first one is gender equality should, be, should not be a radical idea. I get that talking about politics, religion, or social justice issues on a first date could be perceived as intense. Gee, you think? At the same time, gender equality should not be a radical idea. If I'm out with someone who is offended or discomforted by the idea of all genders are equal, that's a red flag. They may not be having uh, issues or feeling uncomfortable about that subject, but they're going to feel uncomfortable and turned off by this coming up as a subject on the first date, where usually you might talk about fun stuff like what do you like to do for fun or traveling and things like that, not going into this intense debate. The only people who might like that are, you know, feminized guys or guys that are people that are equally as intense, okay? And usually they don't want to listen, they want to talk. Uh, number two, I don't want to be, I don't want to be several months in and find out that he harbors sexist views. Speaking of red flags, I'd rather identify them early on, on that be several months into the relationship only to find out that my partner and I have opposing fundamental beliefs. Gender equality is not something minor to me. Really, I, I never caught on to that at all. There are some things I'm willing to agree to disagree about. Yeah, bullshit. And this is not one of them. The kinds of beliefs someone has about gender tells me a lot about their expectations for our relationship. During the time I was avoiding talking about ethnicism on first dates, I still talked about politics and assumed that a guy I went out with was com compatible with me because he was anti-racist and fairly left-wing. So she didn't talk about uh, ethnicism and equality, but she couldn't hold off on talking about politics and left-wing stuff, okay? People like this can't shut the hell up. People like this, over the last four years, were losing their minds left and right. That's just These are the type of people that would have their TV on to CNN 24 set, well, at least whenever they're awake. The ones that will have the, when they're taking a shower, would have their phones on to listen to CNN or whatever their stations are. The ones that are constantly talking about it. Ones that are just, their, their whole day was ruined because of some tweet that the president said. That's the type that she is, guaranteed. Uh, goes on. I only later found out that in addition to being mostly liberal, he's also an anti-abortion and is a strong proponent of traditional gender roles. The nerve of him. Because I had already spent a, big time, a bit of time getting to know him and I liked other things about him. I tried to make it work, but we argued on a regular basis. Try he didn't argue. Try she argued. Try she picked and poked to get him going. That's probably what happened here. And I would never be a good wife he was truly looking for. If I'm dating a sexist man, I will find out eventually. Why wait for it until I'm deep, already in the deep? Well, define sexist, okay? What one, what one person might see or perceive as being sexist would not be to another. Believe me, there are definitely women I know that have known me over the years that definitely see me as being some sexist pick. And I got no problem with it. I don't give a shit. And there are other women that find what I say funny because they don't have giant sticks up their butts. Okay? It all depends on their own personal views and, and how they see things in the world. Uh, number three, I'm not scared of scaring someone away. Yeah, that's, that kind of goes hand in hand. We've heard it time and time again. Don't talk about religion or politics on the first date. But from my perspective, everything is political in some way. Uh, can you imagine? See, see, guys, this is why I tell you one drink. Okay, can you imagine sitting down for 45 minutes to have a meal with her? Okay, one drink for the first dates. That way, if you don't do screening very well prior to the first date, at least, again, you can chug your beer and get out of there. And by the way, as I said before, 
get for that first date, go to the bar, order your drink, and go grab a table. So when she gets there, it's already paid for. So if you actually had the misfortune of actually getting on a, a date with one of these nut jobs, your drink's already paid for. And if she starts ca- carrying on about this stuff, chug your beer and you walk because it's already paid for. So you're not awkwardly waiting for the bill to arrive to pay with your credit card or cash. Okay, just a little tip there. But from my perspective, everything is political in some way. To avoid all political discussions is to have a pretty shallow conversation. You mean having a fun, relaxing conversation about something enjoyable and pleasant? I'm not dating to walk about, talk about the weather. I'm dating to truly get to know someone. During the time I stopped talking about gender issues on first dates, I felt as if I was hiding part of myself. It's not that my first dates are a two-hour long gender studies lecture. Yeah, sure. Usually, gender issues come up organically because they're connected to something else we're talking about. If not, it's natural for me to mention gender issues when someone asks about my passions or interests. You know, like you ask people about passions or interests. A lot of people talk about traveling or um, things, doing stuff with their family or working out or things like that. You usually don't hear about my passion is politics or going to a protest or some crap like that. And yes, by the way, it is good to get to know someone who they are in the beginning on a date. But the fact that this per- this woman here is so intense has got to be about these things. Trust me, where she's going to be in years to come, she's going to be alone. She's going to be with a couple cats. That's pretty much her future, guaranteed. <clears throat> if not, it's natural for me to mention gender issues when someone else asks about passions or interests. Talking about effiness issues might scare some people away. But if I scare sexist guys away, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Filtering out people I'm not compatible with. Well, it'll be the people you're not compatible with. Or people you might actually would be compatible with. They're going to be so turned off by her being so intense. And talking about this bullshit on the first date. That even someone she might actually click with. They're going to walk. So, uh, number four. I want him to like me for who I am. Good luck. When I had my first childhood crush, I actively tried to be the kind of girl I thought he would like. I was a proper chameleon. Buying a jacket with his favorite football team's logo on it and adapting myself according to his interests. But I've lived and learned, and I'm not dating to stroke someone's ego or to change myself until they finally accept me. I want to date someone who I truly like and want to date someone who truly likes me. Not the idea of me or an altered, watered-down version of me. I once went out with a man who stopped me mid-sentence when I started talking about gender issues. He said, I don't want to hear about this. I want to hear about you. Maybe he thought he was being romantic in a way, but he didn't realize that they're one and the same. I'm passionate about gender issues, and it's part of who I am, not a separate entity. If a man doesn't believe in gender equality, he's not going to like me for who I am. It's that simple. I now realize that the kind of man I want to date is one who's willing to engage in these conversations. No, the guy that she wants to date is the guy that's going to agree with her on everything she says. Who's going to bow down and kiss her ass and basically, you know, whether he's sincere about it or not, be what she said she used to be and not like, okay? Now, I got no problem with someone saying, hey, I don't want to have to change who I am for somebody else, okay? Being who you are, because you are who you are. However, if who you are and personality traits and qualities you have turn everybody the hell off and is seen as a negative personality, negative negative traits, then that's something different. That's when you got to take a look at yourself and say, I need to make some changes here. I'm turning everybody off. But when you try to talk to somebody like this, everybody else is the problem, not not them. Okay, It's, it's them, not me. Number five, I can learn more about who this person truly is. I don't expect anyone to be perfect. Sure. I don't expect a person I'm dating to know everything about gender issues. I don't either, of course, or to fully understand something that he hasn't experienced firsthand. But I do expect him to be open to listening. I do expect him not to be defensive. Talking about issues like this shows me how he he, he reacts when faced with something uncomfortable or challenging. And I guarantee you she loves to put people in uncomfortable situations and try to get a rise out of them, to push their buttons, to test them. As I say, all women do, guys. Testing. 
Is he just being defensive when I'm simply asking, having a discussion or not, and not trying to argue? Or does he want to know more? I once went out, went out with a guy who said he, he didn't believe some survivors of S-word assault because they reported it years after it happened. Extreme red flags aside, I tried to talk to him about why women might wait to come forward about S-word assault. As it was taking, it was, as I was talking, he got to add more sugar in his coffee and asked me to change the subject once he returned. In other words, we're supposed to be on a fun, relaxing date, and we're talking about these serious, uncomfortable issues. That told me exactly how he liked his version of reality, sugar-coated and easy to swallow. Number six. I don't want to tolerate sexist behavior anymore. Again, like I said earlier, that comes to someone's own definition of what they consider to be sexist. Okay, Someone might be considered sexist to one person or one woman, and to the other, they think he's funny and a smartass. But given this article, and given what we have learned about this gal, pretty much... I'm guaranteeing you she has absolutely no sense of humor, can't take a joke, and like I said, I've known women like this, absolutely no fun, no sense of humor, can't take a joke, and I'm sure many of you guys watching this right now, man or woman, have known women like this. They are not pleasant to be around. She goes on, Gone are the days in which I would ignore casual and benevolent sexism because it could be worse. I'm willing to give second chances. People can change, especially if they don't recognize that the way they were thinking was sexist. But if he just if he just doesn't really care about sexism, thinks it's just not thinks it's not a big deal, or says something along the lines of, "Well, that's just the way things are." I'm not here for that. Benevolent sexism is still sexism, and I don't want it in my relationships. I want an equal partnership. Unfortunately, maybe that's a lot to ask from heterosexual relationship at this point in time. But I'm going to keep asking. Well, she's going to be asking for a very long time. And she's young, so obviously because she's young and probably in her 20s, it's easier for her to get guys. Okay, I don't know what she looks like here, but as she gets older and her, she's visually less appealing, you know, when she starts to get to her 30s and 40s and all, she's not going to have as many guys even willing to even go out and on a date with her just based on her looks, let alone her personality. But, guys, this is what it would be like to be in a relationship with someone like this. It doesn't just, it isn't just the date. It'll be never-ending talking about this subject. And I guarantee there'll be other things. She'll be constantly keeping track of making sure that everything was 50-50 equal in the relationship. She could be thinking, well, I texted him on Monday, so I'm not going to text him on Tuesday. And I'm going to sit back and fold my arms and wait until he responds to me. Or she'll feel like she should be able to open the door for him on a date. And all these other things. Or she can pull out a chair for him on a date. And all these other things. Keeping track, making sure everything is equal, and things like that. I mean, I'm just giving some silly examples here, but you get my point, okay? It's not a pleasant situation. And again, I mentioned before, I knew two guys that went out with women like this. They actually got in a relationship with them. One lived with one of them. And guess what? Both of them bailed after a while. And uh, openly admitted, yeah, it was a huge mistake and couldn't believe they did that. But just, they got brainwashed. But they were also young guys without a whole lot of experience. And both women were older than them. So it was easy for them to manipulate them. So, so anyway, guys, like I said before, you go on a date, one drink. That way then you end up with one of these girls, chug your drink and get the hell out of there, okay? Or if you actually do a dinner and you don't realize it, you know, at some point you may say, I don't want to talk about this. She wants to keep talking about it. Just get right up, say, I'm going to excuse myself, you have a good night, track down the waiter, pay for your portion of the bill with your credit card or whatever, because otherwise they could try to give you, get you on you skipping out in the bill, and that does happen, and that's that, okay? And again, guys, you're seeing just how delusional some of these women can be, and what you're going to do, what, you, what is like in this day and age in varying degrees. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below, let me know what you think about this, and be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.